the Indian government has a problem. With who? With any journalist or media organization that reports critically on the government. After many covert and overt attempts to muzzle the media, the government is ready with its latest attempt. In this week's No Filter with Dhanya Rajendran, I'm going to explain this latest attempt by the government and explain why all of us, including you and me, should question the amendments that the government is trying to make to the digital media ethics rules. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has published draft amendments to the guidelines and rules that govern digital media. One draft amendment in particular is clearly unconstitutional. It says that social media intermediaries like Facebook, Twitter or WhatsApp must take down any news identified as fake or false by the fact check unit at the Press Information Bureau or by any other agency authorized by the central government for fact checking in respect of any business of the central government. So let's break this down. The Press Information Bureau or the PIB will now be authorized to decide if any news article or news item on the union government is fake or not. Not just the PIB, but any other agency authorized by the union government can do this fact check. Make no mistake, this is a clear attempt to give discretionary powers to the government to decide about news content. There is no procedure being laid out this is just a way to censor Indian media. So you may ask, fake news is a problem. Why can't the government deal strongly with it? Yes, fake news is a problem. But first, let's use better terms than fake news, which was popularized by Donald Trump. There is misinformation, that is information which is false, but not created with an intention to cause harm. Then there is disinformation, that is information which is false and created with an intent to cause harm to people, organizations, society or a country. What is misinformation? What is disinformation? Determining this cannot be solely in the hands of the government. And look at the wordings of the amendment. It says in relation to any work of the central government. That means the government will decide whether a news article about its own work is fake or not. Now let's look at a few instances in the past when the government has termed a news article as fake but well, it wasn't. January 31st, 2019. That's the day on which Somesh Jha, a journalist with the business standard, got a really good scoop. He published a report that data by the National Sample Survey Office or NSSO showed that India's unemployment was at a 45-year high. But NSSO was not publishing this data as elections were scheduled to take place. Ministers like Smriti Irani, Sadananda Gauda and others were deployed to turn the story as fake. And of course, government-friendly media did its job. They called this liberal media's fantasy, etc. Later on May 31st, NSSO released this data. By the time elections were over, Narendra Modi was back as the Prime Minister and this was the day that his cabinet was being sworn in and boom, the data was exactly as Somesh had reported. Feeling vindicated, Somesh put out a tweet on that day and many media houses supported him. But how many people do you think in this country were aware that the government used all its might to brand an accurate piece of news as fake? Let me give you one more example. On June 30th, 2022, Tapasya, a journalist with Reporters Collective, broke a story that in March 2022, the Modi government had made Aadhaar compulsory for nutritional program for children. With documents, Tapasya showed that the union government had warned state governments that it will withhold financial support for the scheme and that all beneficiaries had to be children with Aadhaar. As soon as the story was out, our favorite fact check team at PIB called it fake. As Tapasya explains in her Twitter thread, she didn't leave it there. She filed many RTIs and found that the Ministry of Women and Child Development had issued guidelines in August 2022 that Aadhaar was not mandatory. As Tapasya asks rightly, how did the PIB in June brand her story as fake when the guidelines came out in only in August 2022? Did the PIB use time travel? Well, the reality is that the government did place this restriction and when the news leaked out, they backtracked. So if the current amendment goes through, then the PIB has the powers to brand Tapasya and Somesh's stories and many other stories as fake and force social media intermediaries to block them. Is that the kind of democracy that you want to live in?
Now let's look at the PIB itself. I'm going to read out from their website. The Press Information Bureau is the nodal agency of the Government of India to disseminate information to the print and electronic media on government policies, programs, initiatives and achievements. In simple terms, the PIB is the PR wing of the Indian government. So instead of doing PR, will this wing now decide what news is acceptable or not? Who are the journalists who run this? What are the tools they use? Are they even trained to do this kind of thing? We know nothing about the PIB. The next question to ask the government is, what is the tearing hurry? You brought in the IT rules to govern the digital media and intermediaries in 2021. This in fact mandated a two-tire redressal mechanism. So websites like the News Minute, for example, have to have a grievance redressal officer and they also need to be part of a self-regulatory committee. On top of all this, the government of India gave itself emergency blocking powers to block any piece of news on a website without giving the publisher a chance to explain their stand. Many of us have challenged these rules that are clearly against freedom of speech and expression. Disclaimer, I am the founding chairperson of DigiPub, India's largest organization of digital media organizations, and I am one of those people who have gone to court against these rules. So when the rules already gave the government the powers to do emergency blocking, why is it trying to sneak in these amendments? And why do it now when our petitions are with the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court is to decide on the 2021 rules? I heard BJP spokesperson say on various news channels that there is no law to deal with fake news. That isn't true. There are several laws including Section 79, 69A under the IT Act. There are civil and criminal defamation laws. There is even the digital media rules which give the government a lot of power. But all these lay out procedures. It now seems that the government does not want to follow any procedure. They simply want to use the PIB to circumvent all this and block any news that they think is fake. On top of all this, media organizations, whether it's print, TV or digital, have certain code of ethics that they follow. I would in fact say that government-friendly media dishes out misinformation and disinformation more than anyone else. Will the government act against them? Finally, you may be the supporter of any political party or political leader. You may be even a supporter of the BJP and so you are for the amendment. But remember, state governments can emulate this. They can use their state PR departments to fact-check news stories and remove them. How would you react if a government run by an opposition party were to bring in such a law? The government here wants to be the investigator, the judge and the executioner. The government has now asked for feedback on these amendments. Remember, for a thriving democracy, we need a thriving media. So if you have an opinion on these amendments, do write into the government and let them know. And don't forget to support independent media like the News Minute and stay tuned for next week's No Filter with Dhanya Rajendran.